it's amazing. It's the only way I want to work. <laughs> I mean, you can't have that all the time, uh, obviously, because it's, you know, we have a, our work is transient. You know, we go from place to place, but, you know, if you can find a place where you have that shorthand with people and uh, you're all on the same page, then it's, it's the most luxurious, wonderful thing ever. It's like full circle for me. Um, it's come full circle for me. Having attended the Arts Manga High School, and, um, working with Nedra James, who put me in my very first musical, um, which is, I was get low and pearly. And I'm um, going to New York for school and coming back and um, having the opportunity to be successful in a theater of this stature in my home with this group of people. It's amazing. I'm blessed, I'm humbled, um, I'm geeked. And um, I'm just so blessed. Uh, as far as companies are concerned across the country, it's kind of a rarity now. You know, they've started to break up. I was uh, with the Guthrie for a while, but they no longer have a company. Uh, so really, a, a, a company is like almost like a, a dinosaur now. Uh, so to be able to be a part and of a company to where, you know, you have I wouldn't say guarantee because, you know, every actor is not right for every part and every play. But to know that you have a home base um, gives you security, especially in these times that we're dealing with. Economically, to be an actor and to be employed, that's incredible. That's a blessing. It is humbling and exciting, I have to say. Uh, I've been fortunate to work, as, as well as most of the uh, resident company, to work consistently in this community and to be able to say that I have the security of working <laughs> is a beautiful thing, you know. Um, I'm excited about Kevin opening that possibility to us as Dallas artists. Um, I, I've been fortunate to work a lot and it just means the possibility of doing uh, various other projects here. You know, I've done drama and all of those other types of things, but I don't do them as much as I would like to. I, I'm always cast in a musical, which I'm not complaining about. I love to sing and dance, but to sink your teeth into media uh, classical theater, uh, and that's what I've been trained to do, and I'm excited about that prospect. Well, it's it's a tremendous honor to be a part of the ensemble. I, I um, I certainly wouldn't have ever expected it, but to to be able to to you know I was saying to to someone else just recently, Emily and I always tried to when we were producing to tr we tried to hire people and cast people that were better than us because I, I felt like it would make us kind of rise to that level. And aside from the work and aside from being able to work at this space and th this theater and you know it's it's a great paycheck and all those things. It's a collection of extraordinary actors and artists, and I feel like it, it's going to keep all of us accountable and, and make us better. So. Um, rejection, I guess. Um, even though in acting class you are, you are beaten down at times, um, but that's different from the rejection of the business that um, you expose yourself. That's one of the things, when I've been a teacher, I tell my students that you have to have the vulnerability to just kind of unzip your heart and show your heart at an audition every single time and then have it willing to be squashed on and ripped out and then be able to zip it right back up so that you can be vulnerable and it also have to be really kind of toughened to, uh, to that rejection. So you get rejected enough in this business that, that it can take its toll, it can make you bitter, it can make you angry, um, but your job is to, every time, open your heart up and pour it out. Um, well, for me, I, I didn't have a lot of training in anything that had to do with acting other than theater. And so what I discovered when I got out in the professional world was that I was doing or had opportunities to do, or was expected to do more than just act in plays. And so I didn't know a lot about the business side of the industry, for both media, but also for theater. And nobody really took us through the process, even in graduate school, of, well, what does it mean to be an equity actor? What are the expectations? Um, how are rehearsals run? You know, what is my responsibility as the actor in the collaborative process? Um, I understood what it was 
between me and the director and the other actors on the stage, but you know, how, how do I actually relate with the costume designer and how can what they're doing inform my process of characterization and all of that stuff. And so, um, yeah, so that's something that I had to kind of learn as I was doing. Well, I had to learn how to listen. They talk about it a lot in acting class, but you don't actually work on it because it's tough to teach, so teachers tend to move past it. How to actually hear something that someone says to you and have an actual open response to it. Um, so, meaning, you know, meaning basically, if, you know, if somebody says something to you, you should actually have an experience. You, you should feel hurt, you should feel pain, the, the need not to show strength at all, all times, that weakness is important, that hurt, you know, is actually essential to what goes on. So I think actually learning that, that the person across from me is the important one, it's not actually me, was helpful. I think there's really only one main element, uh, and that is that theater doesn't happen, in my opinion, without the audience. It just, you know, you can, you can do workshops, you can do all of that, you can hone your craft, working on this, that, and the other, doing readings and all that, but it just doesn't happen until the audience comes out there. That is, the audience is that, that last actor in the play. And, and for me, when you have that collective energy that just starts flowing in a circle like this between you and the audience. And it really doesn't matter what play you're doing, what kind of play, whether it's comedy or whether it's a deep drama, it doesn't really matter when that starts to happen. And, and, and the energy just starts rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling so that by the end it, 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 it explodes. That's what, what to me is an exciting night. And I think, I think those nights are the ones, it's like the perfect golf shot. You know, most golfers in the world, like me, are terrible, but every once in a while you hit that perfect shot. And it, you know, insanely makes you keep doing it, you know. So that's what it is for actors. That's how we get hooked in this business, is that energy that happens. Uh, doesn't happen every night, you know. Uh, bits of it happen every night, but as a whole it doesn't happen every night. But, but that's what keeps us coming back, and I think it's what keeps the audience coming back as well.